My name is Brian Kwan Wood. I am the curator and writer of Meditations on Shadow Libraries. My name is Heeman and I work as an artist with Brian. We've been developing this exhibition. what importance uh, books have for your thinking behind this exhibition. What are shadow libraries? Shadow libraries are informal libraries that occur whenever individuals collect material on the internet and they are distributed freely. In many cases, sort of like circumventing copyright issues. I chose to begin the exhibition by thinking about shadow libraries because at the heart of my practice, is this idea of circulation and exchange. We are sitting inside of the library of unread books. Mm. I think an interesting example of something which is highly planned and mm. also very chaotic and, and very uncontrolled. Could you talk a bit about how this project came about? The library of unread books began in 2016 as a collaboration between me and the archivist René Stahl. And we were very interested to imagine and construct a library that is full of chance and chaos. The topics of the books in the library is really only defined by people who have donated their books that they have bought but they haven't read. So it's a very simple way of transforming an object that is like that is private property into an object that is that exists in the commons. So we wanted it very much to be a real library and not just an artwork in a way that people could like read the books mm -hmm. and they could spend as much time as they want in the library. So the books are always stacked on tables, different piles, because I think it returns it to what we imagine of as a kind of sculptural moment. So upon entering the library, you're always confronted with these stacks of books that speak to you in a way that it's very welcoming. Like you, you, you know that you can touch. It's very different from like entering a space with books that are just shelved. So the idea of like the stacks changes all the time because people shuffle the books around. There's never a moment where your experience of the library is similar to someone else's experience because a certain book has moved from its position, you know. Quite related to the arrangement of physical book mm. as a sculptural object, but as mm. a form, as a series of paintings that faces the library of mm. unread books called Labyrinths. Could you tell us a bit about Labyrinth? The series Labyrinths Libraries, it's a series of paintings that I started two years ago it represents a point in my life where I started to think about books in its visual form. And then I think the paintings over time also begin to look like sets of data or mm -hmm. blocks of data. So the way that I had approached the painting of these paintings is to finish a painting and then to paint a last layer over it, which comprises of these blocks and these lines which form a kind of interplay between abstraction and landscape for me, you know? Mm -hmm. Related to the abstraction mm. of information mm. and its relation to bodies and to, to place, this is a very interesting sort of cluster of works that you have on the, on the far side of the, of the space. Eternal mm. Returns, a memory is a very different work. Yeah. Um, but then somehow closely related to them. How these works also deal with the, with mm. the body, with mm. memory, but mm. also with place and, and, and in a way landscape, as you mm. mentioned. I think around 2009, I realized that the short stories that I've been writing, they're not very good. But at, at the same time, I wanted to continue writing short stories. I suppose it's also about finding a way to publish these short stories that would not have any kind of permanent effect on how people see me as a short story writer. Mm. So I thought about publishing them really as performances. So hence the, the series Memories is kind of like a very important series in my life because it allows me to write short stories in a way that's liberating and I don't really have to think about it 
ever being on paper or being you know distributed digitally a lot of times people would remember it as part of the performance and then they will forget it the next day and i think that's very much related to like the other two series which is like still building and eternal returns which deals with like amnesia and i think that so much of our lives today are are less rich because we don't really remember things anymore. There's just so much that we have externalized when it comes to remembering mm -hmm. into our phones, into our laptops. There's a kind of interplay between these three different things involving a series of addresses that don't exist anymore. And, you know, like the performance that you have to like memorize a short story like in full. And of course, like paintings of like, they are made from sort of haphazardly playing with business cards that then look like buildings. So there's a lot of relationship for me that deal with the slippery notion of memory. Mm -hmm. Unrealized Film Festival. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a bit about that? I've always wanted to make a film festival called Notes on Roads, Trips and Other Flips and Falls, which is a pirate cinema film festival that will occur in 365 homes in a given city. You know, every night of a, of a single year, there will be like an announcement for an undisclosed location and where people would gather to watch a film collectively. So again, this idea of a sort of a temporary community is always very important to me. Every time I try to make this project, it fails terribly. Either because of the police or like the institution getting Kofi. I kind of gave up the actual making of the project because it's, it's been like years and years since I've tried to make this project. And what I've done is to distill the projects into a series of film posters that sort of constitute a wall mural. And this wall mural is always sort of in, in envisioned as a kind of public artwork. You know, like something that would happen on the street. It's sort of the perfect excuse for a public artwork, which is about an unrealized idea, where public artworks are always supposed to be like extremely finished objects. You know? Yeah. So you brought up bookmark leaves earlier. I think it's also somehow related to to oleanders. Could you tell us a bit more about how these works came about? For oleanders, it is really about the making of a new shadow like you. And I can kind of think about these images as pirated images. Mm. What I did was to walk around the mat to photograph every painting that had a book in it mm. and to use a very high resolution camera to zoom in on the book. So it's literally an act of stealing that image, you know? And uh, the first iteration of Oleanders is a kind of cinematic moment where I just would have a slideshow of these images. I think it's very similar to bookmarks because it's also a collection of things which are very shadowy. This idea of press leaves. I mean, you know the Latin word pagina, it literally refers to a leaf mm. and a page, you know. The idea of imagining these leaves having soaked up like all the words of this library book that it was pressed in for such a long time it means a lot to me that it has this material relationship. These two projects, when you see them together, they all deal with like the sort of the lives of books, mm -hmm. which is an object that I constantly think about in my work because it is obviously a very important technological uh, breakthrough in human history. The idea that something could be mechanically reproduced and distributed to the masses. This idea of the Gutenberg press mm -hmm. is fundamental to also processes of democracy fundamental to how future generations collaborate with each other.